Nice. Okay. Well, I hope you guys enjoy it. For those of you who have been here before, you guys know the drill. This is One Million Cups. It's a weekly entrepreneurial event where two entrepreneurs from the community come up here, talk to you about what they're building here in Tampa Bay. Then you have 20 minutes after their presentation to ask them questions, make suggestions, seek clarification, and most importantly, think through your connections, your mental Rolodex, to make connections for them so they can grow their businesses here. My name is Sean Kennedy, I'm an organizer for One Million Cups, along with Murray and Barris, Danielle Whitelaw, uh, and JJ Roberts, and Chris Bennett, both in absentia today. We also have Carly Ellison, having been on the poster as always. Carly is one who puts together this lovely event every day. She also puts together our weekly emails. Uh, so if you have not gotten one, there's a signing sheet over there by the door. We tell you about who has presented, how you can contact them, how you can help them out who's coming up next week, and all about the events we discuss in the middle portion of that. We'd also like to thank our sponsor, Cowa Coffee, responsible for the delicious coffee here that keeps us awake and, and uh, energized during these great events. And we'd also like to thank our presenters, one of which, coming from the caregiver and seller, today is Chris Gives the caregivers peace of mind. It's not dependent upon government funding. 
and the model can be duplicated. It's the band yet. The roots keep expanding. So here's where we are. We are positioned to grow. This is where we've been in the last eight months. Our next step is to do a training program this summer. We're hoping to pair up with ARC. We've got a, a meeting in two weeks to see if that's going to be a possibility. So we will have a, a training camp. And then, just to let you know, um, we feel like the future is in our, in our hands. We want you to help us. The next steps are funding, property identification, community buy-in, and helping us market, and then putting the, the uh, meat on the bones operational plans for both the hotel and the, uh, the, the facility. We have board members and advisor teams that are assisting in these areas but we need you too. I want to remind you as we close, this is our daughter Mary Elizabeth, by the way. We've got this wonderful group of people out there who are joyful and quirky. Uh, they're creative and loving. And we can give them a chance to fly. Mm -hmm. So please join us. Thank you. the disabilities that fall under this umbrella, the way you have the 
the Agency for Persons with Disabilities describes it as those with autism, any kind of intellectual, intellectual disability, um, Willie Prater syndrome, Down syndrome, spina bifida. Did you see the speaker? I think it was last week or the week before that Tom puts out. Yeah, yeah, you did see it. Okay. Yeah. Well, the the, the lovely thing, and this is a commercial for the Caregiver Accelerator Program. We went through the nine-week course together and immediately found each other because our hearts and our passion are in the same direction. Um, in Tampa, we'll become the center for autism in the business world. Um, we hope to provide a lead more than just the autism spectrum, but we hope to provide that same kind of service over on the side of the day. And we will definitely be working in conjunction with each other. So thank you for that. We're a big fan of her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sean. So on your timeline, you had summer camp starting this summer. Correct. Um, but it's April, and it's a long process to acquire property. Is there a temporary solution where you rent yes. something in the summer? Yes. Um, we, we've got this. The special needs network is, is very broad. <laughs> We've got a friend who um, has a business which provides personal supports for those who live at home. And um, she has connections with ARC. And I've also interviewed the, the directors, the associate directors at ARC. Oh, um, it's the Association for Retarded Citizens. That's and it's the biggest provider of free housing in our, in our county. Thank you for that. And then there's also um, the, the, the Pinellas. Park that's right down here. Um, at any rate, we have connections with ARC. They have had an ongoing program, which is not going to be meeting this summer. So our meeting with them is, can we just move into your space? And we'll be rent free and we can use all the uh, facilities at the Long Center. It's, it should be a win-win for everyone. Can you also talk a little bit, you mentioned your advisory board and things like that, just to tell us a little bit about who is how, why you're Okay, well, thank you for asking that because um, I'm trying to anticipate what you might ask, what I would ask if I were in your shoes. Um, this is our board of directors, and um, even my husband, business mogul. My background has been in education and um, ministry. I was in full time ministry before our daughter was born, and then continued in part time capacity. After that, um, student ministry, middle school, and through high school. And then, um, up through 2014, I worked at Loki Armour Group as the administrator, executive assistant to the owner and COO, and we started Loki Charities while I was there. So that has been a fantastic um, mode of transportation. I know lots of people in the world, but I also know how to do the big events that we will need to find ways. One of my favorites, this is a mom of a um, young lady with Down syndrome. Um, she works for Mark Hamwender. He's a no that heads down here. He's a special needs attorney down here in St. Pete. She's an advocate. She's one that goes to the IEP meetings at schools working on special needs and advocates on behalf of the family. And IEP is an individual education plan that every special needs student has the teachers hate. <laughs> then Stephen Clagg is the um, he calls himself the head. He's the superintendent of Stackers Christian School and has become a good friend. We worked on, on big um, community-wide service projects with them. Trust him. He's got a finance background. And then our last pick, um, Wayne Cornell, who's been a family friend for 20 years, upstanding construction, and that's not an oxymoron. He is very well respected. He worked for his dad before he started his own construction company. So we feel like we are covered in special needs and nonprofit world and the finance and business world and, and, and the area of construction, which we will definitely be using. And then back in October, we had a, our kickoff meeting. I've been getting a bunch of phone calls from parents saying, we've heard about this, we've heard about this, what's going on. And instead of addressing every phone call, we said, okay, we're going to have a kickoff and explain the whole thing. So you all come. And um, they met us in, in Woodlawn Community Academy where our daughter graduated. And there were 100 people there, mostly parents, who wanted to know about this plan because we're all hungry for what's happening next. And um, you guys are lucky. The six-minute pitch there was 40 minutes, and then we took an hour's worth of questions, and then the others stayed after. So um, 
So anyway, that's where we, we knew there is an interest, there's a market. And the hotel will be accommodable for, um, accommodable for um, special needs guests. That's one of our priorities. There's a huge group of disabled travelers in the UK, and they're expanding over here, uh, that we're connected with. And Pitch decided to give them, and they said, we will put you on a recommendation list to get our vaccine. So uh, there will be a market for, you know, for the hotel end as well. But we'll also want community people to come into the shops and to um, even the, the, the restaurant and to be our young people. Um, just, to give you, just to give you an idea, and you can, I left these blank because I figured you guys could throw out more ideas about some of the, the employment positions that would be open in a hotel. What size of a facility do you have in mind and how does it compare to the market that you see out there? Yes, thank you. Um, to support 24 residents, we'll need a hotel of 100 rooms. That will be enough profit to supplement the cost of the hotel. And, the, and that is actually um, in line. We're, we're looking along the beaches of Pinellas County, south of Clearwater and north of St. Petersburg. If not in the partier places, but in the more family beaches along there. And there are many hotels from anywhere from 24 rooms up to um, San Key is one of our favorites. It has over 300 rooms. But even a facility that size, they have 15 accessible rooms. So that means the bathrooms are bigger. Um, you know, there's a wheelchair to turn around, wider doorways. Um, so uh, we've looked at anywhere in the price range. The mom and pop places charge dollars a night and on up to the higher end, three hundred sixty-nine dollars was the, the highest. You mentioned earlier on one of your slides that you wouldn't need any government funding. Can yes. you go a little bit more in depth with that? Because I, not knowing this industry at all, I would think it would be prime for government funding. Well, we will take advantage. Of business owners, you probably know this. Um, the administration right now is providing um, employment incentives. If you hire someone with disabilities they will pay you a percentage per employee. We'll take advantage of that. But um, one of the things we want to steer away from, what, what was originally intended as a safety net, which is SSI, SSD, the Social Security payments, and then um, Agency for Persons with Disabilities, that's what's called the Med Waiver, Medical Waiver. And that provides all things from job training, um, through houses, through crisis, uh, you know, getting a behavioral analyst for your child or whatever. Um, that has become the mode of income now for families. Uh, we approached one of our widowed friends who's got a 26 year old and said, hey, this is what we're planning, would you be interested? And she said, oh, it sounds like a great idea, he would love it, but I depend on his income for my house payments, so I'm sorry. So we want our kids <coughs> I even offered her, why don't you become one of our, our resident assistants? And then, you know, but, um, we want our kids to be able to make enough money that they don't have to depend on the government paycheck. They don't have to worry about, right now you can't have over $2,000 in your kind of account to be penalized. Um, what else, parents? Um, we want them to be, well, you know, the pie of earning your own paycheck, paying your own way. Thank you for that. That's a good question. Yeah, I have another follow-up. Okay. Uh, I know you mentioned kind of earlier about talking to find out what your niche is, and it seems throughout your presentation that the disabled traveler should be your niche. Is there any? Are there any agencies that focus on helping the disabled travel that maybe you'd be able to partner with, or are there? reasons why you haven't just narrowed down on that specific field? Well, government agencies are usually the biggest person that you go to, and they don't consider travel a necessity. So um, that's, <laughs> that's a luxury. So there's not a program there. We've connected with um, just grassroots organizations. Uh, there's one called Emerging Horizons, and it's a lady who travels around in her wheelchair, a mobile scooter, and evaluates hotels and breakfasts and all that and publishes it so you know, there's a, a big time in her. Um, but no, we haven't found that might be 
the next startup for someone. <laughs> Disable travel. We haven't found anything to, to uh, connect with. I mean, I would think that there exist travel agencies that specialize in helping folks with family members that have disabilities travel. And even if that's not your problem, just getting in touch with them to find out whether they pay a premium, uh, you know, those things to, to increase your revenue stream to kind of allow for the rest of what you're trying to do. That's a great idea. So what we've discovered is in, in putting together the accommodations um, for the accommodations for a hotel, everything's one level. You have beds that Disabilities. 
My wife works for Foley, which is mental disabilities, and they have a massive housing program and do all of those support things for that group. It seems to me that an incremental approach to this might be to see if you can find hotels that would employ your population, focus on the housing component and building your client base, and then move into the hotel area because hotel is a separate business and it's probably not an easy business. Have you thought about that kind of an incremental approach? We have not thought about that. And as we're looking for the property acquisition, it may be that that's what we have to do first because there's not available land on the beach yet. I can tell you for a fact that the hotels are, the prices already went up two years ago because I was moving. You, yeah, you noticed. Hi, Jane. Thank you for sharing you know, your venture and everything that you're going to bring to the community. Can you let us know what the community can do for the Banyan Odyssey? You bet. Number one is probably everyone here has a family member or a friend or someone in their church who is dealing with a disabled young adult. And um, if you will tell them about us, I'm going to put it back on the slides where Thank you. 
before I haven't heard about their product. Electronic tablets can be very difficult to hold, especially if you have any kind of hand dysfunction, which I suffer from arthritis. Um, they're not shaped for your hand. Uh, the margins are very narrow on the side, so a lot of times you will change the page if you're reading a book before you want. Uh, the market recognizes that there's an issue because there are hundreds of mounts and stands. But I want to help you get a better grip on your tablet. There are, are, are some products that have put some handles on electronic tablets, but I, I believe that the pattern around is a far superior product and is much more versatile than the products on the market. So it, here you can see the front and the back. I'm wearing an iPad. I'm wearing hanging the iPad mini around my neck right now. There's lanyard loops on the back. Um, I think there's a footer right here. There are lanyard loops on the corners on the back that allow you to hang a, put a lanyard on it or any type of crossbody um, device so that you can hang it around your neck across your body. Uh, it also has on the back a quarter to an insert. And you can see that I have two tablets on products that have quarter 20 threads on them. There's a little mini tripod on the table to show you. And there's, I have a uh, pattern around right here that was a prototype. It is actually from the mold that we had made in silver, so we can see what colors look like. And I'll pass it around. The small one weighs 6.3 ounces, and the large one weighs 7.3. So they're very light. They don't have a lot of, um, they don't add weight to your handles, to your tablet. Uh, you can put two to four handles, or actually one to four handles on your electronic devices. I've put uh, one handle on this one to show you. And, you know, the screens are, three, are 360, so my son said, Mom, I don't need two or four handles, I just need one. I'll just flip it when I need to use it. So, you know, it's, it's customizable. You choose how you want to use it. The iPad has two handles on it. I prefer four on my mini because I like rotating it without having to take the device out. So I came here because I'm at a new stage of the, the development of the, the life of the patent around. Here are some features uh, you can use to photograph or video. Um, I just recently had the opportunity to video my son on his final flight at Randolph Air Force Base using my iPad mini. I had never taken the opportunity, all this time I've had the patent around, to, to use it for video and it worked out really perfectly. Um, you can take it on a Jet and put it on the tray table. You, you, it's, uh, my four year old grandson uh, plays video games on it. Again, you can hang it around your neck to keep your hands free. And so it, it's customizable. At some point in time, we can produce it in any color for any industry. Uh, the, the, we offer clamps with the handles uh, so that you can personalize the pad program. You, we, we can customize again the colors for specific markets. It has a unique design which allows you to attach any um, camera accessory on the back of it. More importantly, again, you can customize your use. Um, and here's where we are right now. What are we doing? We, we did very well at competition on Michael Inventions Radio, and the, the team, John and Ahas, are taking the patent around to the HSM um, <coughs> studio. I don't know where that is, because it's like a mystery, because you will back box. You can't ask questions, don't ask where we are. Um, a thousand of, them of each are now in my warehouse in Tampa. Uh, we are being reviewed by Gromit and Joy and Jana. I've sent a prototype of samples to them. We were nominated for a Million Cuts Tampa Award for, one, for Best Product for the Year. Um, we're going to be interviewed on Friday um, by Channel 10 for their new show. And I uh, just passed the first review from the group on for As Seen on TV. So tomorrow they take it to the next level, and we'll see what kind of offer they want to try to make. Um, so one of the questions I ask people is, do you think you're getting a maximum versatility from your tablet? And I, without this kind of holder, I'm telling you, I don't believe you are. Every day I find another way I can use the pad around to make it easier for me to hold my tablet. You can see we're, we're lying in bed watching a video together. Uh, my other job that pays the bills, I'm an environmental consultant, I can take it in the field um, to take pictures. I'm about to take it in the field next Monday to be able to watch where a drone goes as I look for fox squirrel nests. So um, right now, you can buy one. I can sell you one right here. Uh, the, other, the 
the other beauty of the pantheon is that I can change this handle out. I can put a clamp on it, and I can put my credit card reader right there. <laughs> Mobile and uh, computer accessory distributors. No, Tesco is a distributor. Yeah. Distributor. 
I can I can probably name great. some companies. Because that's the way to get into some yeah. of these companies. It's not really directly through the company. I'd love to be able to like show it in Sprint, you know, or, or one of the cellular stores. But you've got to find the distributor because there's a distributor who represents and fill and fills the the little display cases at these different stores. It's really not the, the, the cell phone company. They they pay you know they subcontract it. Have, have you protected it? Patent? Oh yes, it's patented. Yeah, the patent number was on the web screen. I had it, no, 898 I'm a physical product designer, so I had to ask once you brought up the walls. Where do you build your tools or your walls? No, it's in China. I couldn't, I, I tried desperately. Nobody tried harder than me to get them made in the United States. Have you heard of Proto Mold? Mm -hmm. um, it's a rapid um, prototyping molding facility based out of Wisconsin. Okay. making some changes based on feedback that you got from Chris Bennett at the last One Million Cups. What other changes have you made to your business model over the time between that presentation and this presentation? Um, I don't think very much. I think that was pretty much the, the most valuable. Um, it was, it's been hard to find ways to market it when I was selling it from the, the 3D printed um, prototype because they were, the handles were brittle. And I, I, they broke on me. Long as you, I couldn't hold the device with one hand because the 3D printed material was so brittle, it wouldn't hold the weight. And as time went on, the material deteriorates, believe it or not. I didn't realize that. So I, I think it's oxidizing. So um, I had to kind of put the brakes on it in November. I, I just, there's nowhere I could go until I could get the product in my hand. And I only got it here two weeks ago. So now it's up in the, the Blitz Creek. You know, um, throwing things against every wall I can find. I'll call any, I'll, I'll ask anybody. Yes. It's a dissonance your idea, but when I look at that, I almost see a little character. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you thought about like having a little animated, that the case is actually an animated character holding your case. Uh -huh. It could be a little mascot, but from a marketing perspective, right. that's, yeah. that might be a very cool to do and kind of give it a life as well. Mm -hmm. That's great. Find somebody who can do it. So the question kind of about the handles here. Um, did you have any prototypes where the handle were more like copy mug handles? Yeah. So you could like, hang on the hook that way instead of putting on the back of the thing. Yeah, we did. We, we tested some of uh, what you have to design based on the future user and the man with big hands. If we, if, we, if we designed something that was more like a co copy mug handle, then, then it would be difficult for men with big hands to get their hands in there. I just wonder if that follows how strong or the ears on that handle it, it right with this hand off. I would think so. Um, the one thing I haven't done, I wanted to try to get into Barnes & Noble Collegiate. They now run 874 college bookstores. 
So you've got to go through the corporate gauntlet to get a product in, and one of them is it has to be engineer tested for ch childproof or something. And there's a company in Jacksonville, the only company in the full in Florida that um, is authorized to, to do it for now. Uh, and they do it based off of your design. They don't even actually have to have a product. But it, I'm, I'm at a, in a cash flow problem right now. So I don't know how much stress it will withstand. I mean, I've dropped it a couple of times. Is that, that's, obviously, that's not a, a good test. Um, but that, that would be my next step so that I can get into uh, corporations like Barnes and Noble so I can uh, try to get on the you know, school board. You mentioned a cash flow problem. Are you actively looking for investment, or are you, uh, is your plan to ride out that cash flow problem? No, I, I would definitely take an investor. Absolutely. Um, I, 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 I joke. I'm retiring up to this. Okay. I have to. I have to get out of the swamps. I'm a little bit too old now for it. Um, and. I don't intend to retire. I don't want to retire. So this is a, a really good way of me going into a new uh, field, a new uh, endeavor. Uh, and I put, I do put a lot of time in this, fortunately or unfortunately. Um, there's my environmental consulting business has not recovered from the recession, so I do have occasionally, you know, a day that I can do nothing but this. So that's my goal: is to move out of that, leave that for the younger people. You talked about the difference in the materials from your 3D printed prototype to what you have now. What is the weight of what you have now when it attaches to the device, the additional weight that it's adding? It, the, the large one adds 7.3 ounces, and the small one 6.3. So it's, if you feel it, the, the silver one was moving it around, I don't know where it is now. It's, it's really relatively light. If you take it off, you tamp it off of it, and then you put it, it, it adds the negligible weight to it. We've, been very careful. There is a metal part on it that retains and holds the hand, the clamps and the handles, and it's the lightest way to lose them. We find that way that hold you know that's pretty strong. So that's the only metal. And then, well, actually, well, the uh, quarter twenty is, is a copper device. So it's a, and then the thumb nuts. I didn't mention that. The thumb nuts. We also have our specially designed. It's our own design. We wanted them large enough so that. They wouldn't be difficult for uh, people with physical, any kind of disability to be able to turn them. And there's an, obviously there's a threaded insert in that that is something that is put in there by the factory. So that's where I am. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, is this going to change more? I know there's a lot of different capitals out there from different um, companies. Is it going to be interchangeable with all the others? Some of them are a little bit bigger than others? It's, it, the, I'm just kind of brain cramped. <laughs> you know, it will fit like this Samsung 10. I originally had this design for the Kindle. That was the product I was using. But the Kindles now are too thick, so I can't market it for Kindle. We're at 0.38 of the uh, three tenths of an inch. So the the the, um, the restriction on this. The, you know, there's a, a size restrictions. I can't put a, a Microsoft Surface in this. The 9.9 inch won't fit on it. And, and the Apple now has a larger iPad that won't fit on it. You know, you, you spend your whole life chasing, but it'll fit a lot of different products. And the limitation is the thickness, and that's about three, three, in, uh, three tenths of an inch. Now, I don't see people making thicker tablets. They're not. They're all going thinner. And then somebody once asked me, I think, was it I don't know where it was. What if they make round tablets? And where would you be? And I said, you know, I'm not that big a technophile, but I darn well bet they'll never come up with a round tablet. So, um, yeah, that that is our limitation. But then again, we don't need to make it a limitation when I can make additional molds. Uh, if I want to, I thought the Kindle was the that was the product to chase because you know Amazon was almost giving them away. A lot of people read. People are reading from everything. I read from my iPad mini, I read from my telephone if I'm caught someplace. Um, so I decided to go after a broad 
you know, spectrum and try not to chase one product. Because I call it patent I mean it's designed for the other uh, products. It just was a catchy name that wasn't uh, trademarked by anybody. I was going to use the word tab, but um, there's so many trademarks based on tab. Yes, sir. Do you have a list of the, the tablets that, that will fit on your website? And I didn't see your website up there, so. I'm, I'm sorry, it's padbrand.com. It was on the first page. Okay, thank you. Well on it. Um, but it's, um, do I put it on the last page? Uh, it's on the first page. Um, I have the list of the dimensions. Um, I, the, the problem is that I want to physically test them and put them in to make sure they fit, and I can't afford to buy them all. <laughs> So, you know, I, I might go over to Best Buy or something. I was just going to suggest go to Best Buy. Yeah. They'll probably let you test it to make I'll sure it fits. I'll probably go to Best Buy and take them both one of the, in, in the very near future. So I can, I've i listed some, like Nexus 7. I just added some on the on, uh, on the web page by just looking at the dimensions uh, on this uh, product spec sheets for with the Amazon or most uh, websites. They'll show you, if you look close enough, they'll tell you what the dimensions of their product is. I would just say that you might direct people, continually direct people to your website because right. that has most information and everything else right. about okay. that for those things. Just because you're a discourse when you're talking. Right, and you can purchase from the website. I'm also on Amazon. I have a page on two pages, both of them are listed on Amazon and on eBay. So I'm trying to you know, get every um, uh, internet um, location I can. Uh, I see that you have one book for a tripod. Would it work for a camera tripod? It'll work on any any device, any camera device. They're all the same thread. I just these are just some of the products I've purchased. I have a selfie stick in the box. You can put your tablet on a selfie stick. Um, GoPro is the is, is proprietary. Their attachments are proprietary, but there are third parties that have now have adapters to change GoPro's attachment to a quarter twenty. So that's okay. <laughs> Yeah. 
there, buy one, buy one for your grandchildren or buy one for your mother. Um, I'm trying to just, uh, everybody, I don't want to be one of those people who has a viral video that gets three million views. That, um, you know, why is it happening to somebody else? I want it to happen to me, but I just need help finding, getting it out in the market and getting, letting people know about it. That it's here, it's real, it's ready to be purchased. Thank you. Thank you.